Get a Book. Today presents Fleet Commander Recon, Book 4 in the Starships at War series by Shane Lachlan Black, copyright 2018. He is Shane Lachlan Black, the Internet's original stunt writer. Computer, is everything ready? Affirmative. All systems report nominal operations. As you can see, the channel is approaching a major milestone, and since we have the best readers in known space, we figured it was about time for a party. So we came up with the 5x5 five five celebration. We'll be publishing five new audiobooks on getabook.today shortly. Between now and when we hit 5,000 subscribers, if you buy any two audiobooks from our store, you get the third title of your choice absolutely free. We've got the first three novels in the Starships at War series, introducing the captain, officers, and crew of Defender Starship Argent and her escort fleet of heroic warships. We've got Battle Force, the Praetorian Imperative, Bloodwing, and Let None Return Alive. Four titles from the Expeditionary Fleet and Destroy All Starship series, and it won't be long before the rest of the catalog joins them. Why, we've even got an audiobook title from my Lady Star fantasy adventure universe called The Secret of the Witch Wand, my Kings and Conquests Gamelit series, my nonfiction titles, the all new voyages of the Bonnie Lass, and possibly even a couple of my romance novellas just might find their way to the audiobook section of my store sooner than you think. Remember, you can always buy my books as gifts, and when it comes to fun and exciting stories, every single one of my series is just like the Starship's universe, action-packed and carrying maximum firepower. No DRM, no apps, no passwords, no format hassles, hours of uninterrupted entertainment. Listen to my audiobooks on any device, secure ordering plus, a seven day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. My first online store was live at 95, baby, and I treat my customers like royalty. We are on the march to 5,000. Do I have to say it? All ahead, battle speed! Chapter 2 Lieutenant Colonel Oscar Dorset strode along the outer corridor of Fleet Station Allegheny with cool purpose. He carried with him a metal briefcase that signaled to other Skywatch personnel he was either a civilian liaison or assigned to some form of moderately important desk duty. Upon further inspection, the Silver Judge Advocate's insignia on his collar would have answered all their questions. At Dorset's side was an equally impressive-looking Marine Master Sergeant, she was outfitted in a unique uniform with the distinctive crimson and gold colors of the non-com class A, but used as reverse trim on a smooth black base fabric. Her insignia would have taken even experienced line commanders a moment to identify. She wore the rare red and white wing star of the Skywatch Criminal Investigation Command and carried a gold badge identifying her as a military police section chief. Unlike the attorney she accompanied, she wore a conspicuous sidearm on a white belt. The black utility cover completed the ensemble. The look on her face was all business. Between the two Marines, they carried considerable legal clout. One was there to serve the law, the other was there to enforce it. Their destination was Operations Conference 27 on Corps 3 Headquarters' second highest deck. The two Marines were carrying orders from none other than General Julius Xavier Ross, the Skywatch judge advocate himself. Though the majority of cases taken up by attorneys assigned to the JAG Corps were handled admirably by officers with considerable legal talent and an uncommon dedication to justice, when admirals, task force commanders, and fleet captains were found to be at odds, and decorated line officers were being accused in public, it drew high-powered attention. Colonel Dorset had orders to gather the necessary information about the incidents, deliver the judge advocate's legal interpretation, and retrieve his client from custody. The two passed numerous personnel from every conceivable branch of service. 
More than a few crew members and officers assigned to the Orbital Defense Guard and Orbital Defense Auxiliary were present on the base, as most of ODG's ships had been ordered inspected and repaired or refitted as necessary in case they were needed to patrol core systems. News of the conflict over Bayon 3 and rumors of unidentified warships armed with never-before-seen weapons had triggered readiness protocols fleet-wide. This was one among many reasons dust-ups in the command ranks had to be dealt with swiftly and decisively. The last thing fleet needed were intramural wars interfering with the chain of command in crucial situations. Visible through the continuous bay window on the outer wall of the corridor were two of the more notable vessels from Strike Fleet Perseus. Both were docked for load deck access. Nearer to the station was Defender Starship Minstrel. Her escort frigate designation FFG-840 was proudly visible on her port quarter, while her identification was emblazoned on her sleek forward bow. Her recently upgraded energy batteries gleamed ominously at the outer tip of each wing. Behind her, hovering in space as if waiting silently for prey, was Minstrel's larger squadron mate DSS Rhode Island. Unlike Minstrel's utilitarian gray outer hull, Rhode Island's color scheme was as black and featureless as the space she occupied. The way the two ships were situated, the sleek and dangerous-looking destroyer appeared as if she were daring an observer to approach the smaller vessel. Further in the distance hovered the eerie outline of the battleship Argent. By the way her hull was situated, she appeared to be looking back in the direction of the Bayon system, towards a time and a place where the inexplicable and the unthinkable had happened. Virtually her entire space wing was gone, vanished through a doorway in space that had been ordered classified the moment it was reported to Skywatch Command. Strike Fleet Perseus had been urgently ordered to return to base. Scout vessels and then survey teams dispatched to the Blackburn Jump Gate had completed their first evaluation of the battlefield and the casualties. Search and Rescue had managed to recover revenge and stragglers from the assault formation that had engaged enemy forces over Bayonne 3. Survivors had been extracted from the starship Dunkirk as well. Both cruisers had been successfully recovered and delivered to the Gale River shipyards, where they were hidden from all but a few high-ranking investigators. Also parked at Gale River was the starship Saratoga, which had been ordered off-limits by Skywatch Intelligence. The sense of loss hanging in space over Core 3 was almost overwhelming. The two Marines turned down a narrow passage towards the Deck 2 access lobby. They were three minutes early, but they still had the desk officer to contend with. Nobody was ever happy to see SJAG. Oscar Dorset, I have orders to report to Operations Conference 2-7. The JAG officer flipped open his ID. The sergeant did the same. Her badge gleamed under the stark white lights. Very well, Colonel. Sign for authorization, the desk officer said casually. You'll have to check your weapon, Sergeant. Negative, Ensign, the Marine MP replied calmly. Sidearms are not authorized on Deck 2. For everyone except posted watch and military police, Colonel Dorset replied as he handed the MP the pen. We're late as it is. I'm under orders. The sergeant is here to make sure I can carry them out. The desk officer didn't look convinced, but he certainly wasn't willing to pick a fight over interpretation of 800 pages of regulations with a JAG attorney as an opponent. Very well. Your authorization expires in two hours. Here's hoping it doesn't take that long, Dorset replied as he put on his cover. The watch marine at the lift snapped to attention. The sergeant activated the controls and held the automatic door for the colonel. Mahogany Row, Dorset said quietly as he emerged from the magneto lift. He returned another watch marine salute and led the sergeant down the finely appointed corridor towards the operations complex. The gold appointments, carpeting, and wood-paneled walls were reminiscent of white shoe law firms. They were now squarely in the realm of admirals and rooms full of brass. Everyone on this deck outranked thousands of other officers and crew. The Skywatch attorney mused with an appropriately healthy sense of irony. His only defense was his potential role as a prosecutor, and that his only chance at successfully completing his investigation was his authority as a defense attorney. This also happened to be one of his major weaknesses, as potential antagonists or defendants could turn out to be distinguished fleet and marine officers with all the juice necessary to fold up a mere silver-leaf colonel like a camera tripod and store him in a footlocker. Nevertheless, the Judge Advocate's advance delegation had made it this far. It remained to be seen if they would actually accomplish their mission, unique uniform insignia notwithstanding. Oscar Dorset here to see Vice Admiral Jackson. 
Aye, sir. The guard posted at this last of the gates was a sergeant major, indicating the JAG Corps had now advanced to a point only a few feet below the summit of the highest of Skywatch peaks. The guard opened the opulent wooden door and ushered the Marines into the room. Dorset immediately recognized he wore one of the lowest rank insignia among the officers present. Every other person seated at the table seemed a senior command officer, including his new client, Commander Jace Hunter. Across from the commander sat Admiral Bartholomew James, Sink Northern Banner. His four stars made him not only the ranking officer in the room, but likely one of if not the senior command officer on the station. Northern Banner controlled a dizzying roster of warships. There were at least five major battle groups, including Task Force Ares anchored by the heavy battleship Aquila. Admiral James was one of perhaps a half-dozen Skywatch officers capable of both starting and finishing a war on his own authority. Sitting at the head of the table was Vice Admiral Dexter Jackson. One rear admiral, a commodore, and a female captain were also present, although both Dupree and Dorset would have to admit they had never met any of them. Dorset stood at attention and saluted. The sergeant did the same. Oscar Dorset, sir. This is SCIC Master Sergeant Alicia Dupree. I have orders from the judge advocate to represent the commander during these proceedings. By the book. Vice Admiral Dexter Jackson was the only person in the room who looked like he belonged. Behind him on the wall was an enormous hand-carved plaque depicting the eagle and compass emblem of Task Force Hecate. Very well, Colonel. Be seated. Thank you, sir. Dorset placed his briefcase on the table and took the seat provided for him next to his client. The military police sergeant stood at rest behind them. Everyone in the room was outfitted in their most impressive and intimidating dress uniforms. Jace Hunter looked like she was ready to take a bite out of her chair. Though her medals weren't as numerous as the flag officers, she made up for it with her no-nonsense bearing and a fire in her eyes that had to be seen to be believed. She proudly wore her task force insignia and Perseus emblem. Some might have interpreted the optional insignia as a young woman's attempt to measure up to her elders, but with the hunters, few would have taken such an interpretation seriously. Even fewer would dream of challenging the commander with her brother missing and presumed dead. Based on what had reportedly transpired over on and under the surface of Bayon 3, this was going to be hard enough without picking a fight. Before her on the table was her sword. Like all commanding officers, Jace Hunter had a silver-appointed sword that was more or less a physical representation of her office and authority. By both tradition and code, in official inquiries, commanding officers were required to relinquish their blades until their superiors issued their decisions. Once cleared, the weapons were handed back. If not, they were withheld. A gesture meant to indicate their authority had diminished. Let the record indicate Commander Jace Hunter is now being represented by Special Warfare Division Judge Advocate Oscar Dorset. Inquiry date as previously indicated with all appropriate prior records attached. See to whatever else is necessary, yeoman. Admiral Jackson spoke with a deep basso that was strangely comforting, as if powerful forces had finally arrived to enforce some level of stability and calm after what everyone had agreed by now was a rather harrowing series of incidents. The young woman nodded and worked quietly on a mechanical keyboard. Let the record also indicate this meeting is being recorded and is classified per Skywatch Regulations Section 4002A and 5106C inclusive. Do you wish to make any statements before we proceed, Commander? Before Jace had an opportunity, Dorset intervened. The Commander will be making no statements at this time, sir. So we leave the house in flames and then lawyer up when the fire department arrives, Admiral James said in a hostile tone. Or should I say several houses? There is no evidence the commander is responsible for what may or may not have happened in the Bayon system, sir. We are not here to engage in recriminations. We are here to determine what happened as part of a preliminary inquiry. Fury's crew hasn't even been fully debriefed yet. Well, seeing as the commander has lawyered up and is not prepared to make a statement, how do you propose we inquire, counselor? None of us were there. The only ships we have access to that were in Bayonne when this incident took place are Argent and the members of her space wing that survived. Now we're hearing stories about her malfunctioning battle computer and the fact she was apparently under the command of a girl young enough to be my granddaughter when her captain was blown out of space by a previously undetected and unidentified pirate. I'll ask that you kindly refer to my officers by their proper name and rank, Admiral, Jace snapped. You speak when spoken to, Commander. Is that clear? 
With all due respect, you're not here to give orders, Admiral, Dorset countered. This isn't a midshipman review. Watch yourself, Colonel, James replied with a squint. I will be very happy to bring the full weight of my authority down on this little circus with or without provocation. The more you and your client mouth off, the easier it gets. Admiral, I am here to represent Commander Hunter by authority of the judge advocate himself. If you object to my presence or my representation of this officer, you may feel free to take the matter up with General Ross. In the meantime, I don't work for you and I don't take orders from you. I'm also constrained to remind you interfering with my investigation and interfering in my relationship with my client are both prohibited under Skywatch regulations. How dare you quote regulations to me, you little... All right, Admiral Jackson interrupted. It's clear we have some intense opinions on these matters. Let's stick to the facts. Hunter glared across the table. Sergeant Dupree was pretty sure Jace could take the Admiral if it came to that. Commander Hunter's fiery personality was well known, especially given all the attention her brother had attracted during his rapid rise to command. Admiral James nodded to the captain on his side of the table. The facts are these, she began. The starship Dunkirk is a complete loss. What's left of her had to be tractored back to base. Seventy-one dead, including Commander Toby DeMay. One hundred ten injured, twenty-six missing. The starship Revenge is a complete loss. 215 dead, 16 injured, 11 missing. Commander Enright's injuries have ended his career. The Starship's Constellation and Exeter, both missing, presumed lost with their captains and crews. Assault Squadron 808, all ships missing, presumed lost. More than 1,600 Skywatch Marines, pilots, and crew missing over Bayonne 3, including Lieutenant Colonel Lucas Moody, the crew of Paladin 64, Strike Sergeant Roy Alexander, and his K-9. Hunter leaned forward to respond, but Dorset put his hand on her arm to gently remind her to remain silent. Fleet Captain Jason Hunter lost piloting an unarmed and unescorted fighter during an ongoing firefight between two starships burning in space. At the time, an acting commander with less than a week's experience as executive officer was at least nominally in command of a Skywatch ship of the line. DSS Argent survived the engagement, but lost more than 85% of her space wing which was either destroyed or lost when, according to those members of Argent's crew we've interviewed so far, an entire planet vanished in space. The captain let the tablet clatter on the table, which caused the yeoman to flinch. That's all we were able to gather from statements made by Argent's bridge crew and by the presence or absence of the listed personnel. Do you have anything to add, Commander? Not at this time, Captain, Dorset replied as he made a few notes. Perhaps we should just close down Skywatch entirely until circumstances are convenient for the commander and her lawyers. I don't have the full story yet myself, Admiral, Hunter growled. Fury was not in the Bion system when the battle took place. Well, then where was Argent's heaviest escort when she was engaging four enemy cruisers? We were in the Manassas system trying to keep the forward station crew alive. Dorset again calmed Jace and let her settle back into her chair. Admiral, the Starship Fury was deployed elsewhere per Captain Hunter's orders, as his log indicates. The commander could not have foreseen what took place over Bayon 3, and even if she could have, it would have been her place to recommend an escort, not order it. Apparently, it was her place to recommend a green lieutenant to a command role aboard a ship of the line. Sabrina Mallory was my second officer and had been at the top of the promotion list for... She was in line for a cruiser command, ten years from now, not second chair aboard a five-million-ton battleship while barely old enough to order a drink, James roared. Jace Hunter exerted every ounce of self-control she had. Admiral Powers gave Captain Hunter his choice of officers, Dorset said calmly. And now we see the results, James replied with a poisonous tone. It wasn't my idea to bust half the captain's corps, Admiral, Jace said coldly. It wasn't my idea to put junior lieutenants into senior roles. Those ideas came from the Admiralty, and we were left to make do. Now, I'm not a legal expert by any stretch, but that sounds like dereliction to me. Perhaps I'll start my own investigation. If I have my way, Commander, you'll conduct that investigation from the brig. You think you scare me, Admiral? The look on Hunter's face could have split iron. If you're not smart enough to know how deep you're in it, Commander, then I think we've arrived at the reason 2,000 of your fellow servicemen and women are dead, including your brother and your captain. You're out of line, sir, Dorset snapped. 
Speak to me like that again, counselor, and I'll have you in the brig right next to your client. This inquiry is over. The admiral rose from his chair, and several of his surprised officers did the same. In moments, the Northern Banner delegation was gone. I have business on the surface, Admiral, Jace said calmly. My mother is due here tomorrow. You haven't been charged with anything, Jace, Jackson replied. But I do recommend you stay away from Fury and your crew for the time being. Am I relieved of duty? Hunter held the Admiral's gaze. Everything she had planned the night before rested on Jackson's answer. Negative, Commander, the Admiral replied, but I suggest you take some time for yourself. Jace was about to reply when her attorney distracted her for a third time. Thank you for your patience, Admiral, Dorset said as he packed a few items in his briefcase. Jackson nodded towards the commander's sword, which Hunter retrieved and reattached to her belt. The SCIC sergeant followed the two officers out. Commander Hunter took a breath to protest as her attorney ushered her towards a side conference. The group went inside and Dorset closed the door. What the hell was... The colonel politely gestured for Jace to take a seat. He placed his folio on the table and sat at the table's head. Dorset took a deep breath. Fighting with a flag officer on the record is not going to help us resolve this situation, Jace. General Ross is watching this one very closely. You already know we lost a lot of personnel and several warships in the Bayon 3 engagement, not to mention the disruption from such a large-scale energy discharge when the scattering field activated. These officers are just now dealing with the shock. Anger always follows. We have to expect it and be prepared for it. Hunter calmed herself. The man was right, whatever her personal feelings. She reset and met his gaze squarely. Are we going to trial? Like Admiral Jackson said, you haven't been charged with anything yet. Until we know what happened, we can't proceed WTIH any kind of formal preparations, but I do have some investigators looking into a few things. In the meantime, I want you to stay off the record until I can evaluate your report. Let the admirals rattle and bang in their kitchens. James is old school, and he thinks the truth responds to volume. What happened over Bayon 3 is far too complex for that. The fact Northern Banner rushed us into a preliminary hearing and then abruptly canceled it means our adversaries are up to something. Could be big. I want Sabrina, Tom, and Honora kept out of this, Oscar. I'm taking the heat. I expected as much. I'd advise against volunteering to fall on your sword. Your recommendation is noted, and I appreciate your concern, but that's not the Perseus way. I'm the ranking survivor. If there's any blame to be laid, it will be at my feet, clear? The rest of my officers stay out of it. General Ross isn't going to like that strategy. I took an oath, Colonel. My command, my responsibility. Chapter 3 Commander Sabrina Mallory looked up and was relieved to see the friendly face of Master Chief Petty Officer Duncan Buckmaster. Like the others attending the ad hoc meeting, the chief of the battleship was dressed in unremarkable civilian clothing. Please, she said, indicating an open chair. Seated around the table at the out-of-the-way diner were the remaining senior officers of the battleship Argent. It was one of a few places on Corps 3 they all agreed was unlikely to draw any official attention. The alternative was the officers' mess aboard Allegheny Station in orbit, a location replete with hazards, most of which would be wearing rank insignia and would likewise be prepared to report everything they saw and heard far and wide. I feel like I've suddenly adopted a house full of daughters, Cobb said. Honora chuckled and Zoni smiled. I need to ask a favor, ma'am. Call me Sabrina. We're not on duty. Anything you say, Commander. Mallory blushed. I'd like standing permission to speak freely. Of course. Duncan sat squarely. I received word from Jace. She'll be a little late. He ordered a hefty draft beer and leaned over his mug like a father still contemplating a wound to his family. How are we supposed to get anything accomplished with all these admirals running around issuing conflicting orders? Zoni Tixia exclaimed. We need to go back to Bayonne. Every minute we're sitting here waiting for paperwork to go from this office to that office, Atwell is getting away. We're grounded. All our command codes are suspended. Argent's in the rack. Fury's in the rack. The only way we're going back to Bayonne is in an escape pod, Yeely Curtis replied. This isn't how I imagined we'd end up, Cobb said. Anybody bring the want ads? It wouldn't be this way if it weren't for me and my... Sabrina, Yeely interrupted. We've been over this. Let it go. You aren't to blame. All of us know how Jason gets when he's on one of his missions. 
far more experienced officers than you have tried and failed to talk him out of his wild ideas. You didn't even get a week. But you did your best, and you're still our XO, no matter what some admiral thinks, Zoni added, patting Mallory's shoulder. The brass always has the perfect solution to our problem five days after it happens. How late am I? Jace Hunter put her handheld sunglasses and key disc down on the wood table and took a seat. Unlike the others and their more inconspicuous attire, the commander was dressed in a sharp black leather jacket, fashionable tight jeans and boots. The hunters were living proof denim was likely the most durable fabric invention in human history, as between the two of them, Jason and Jace had owned at least a hundred pair over two decades. Right on time, daughter number five, Duncan said, sliding a basket of breadsticks across the table. What makes you think you can handle adopting us all, Master Chief? Zoni asked playfully. You mean other than the fact I have socks older than any of you? Everyone chuckled as Cobb pulled out a chair for Jace. I was hoping you might have been out looking for our server, as I'm ready for some food. Buckmaster looked around again before taking another swig of his beer. A moment later, Lieutenant Zach Roscoe, newly promoted Fury Mobile Security Sergeant Andrew Benning and Gunnery Sergeant Alan Hall arrived. Benning towered over the table. At six feet five inches in height and dressing out at just under 290 pounds of almost solid muscle, he was clearly the giant of the group. Nevertheless, none of the impromptu meeting attendees wore anything that would tend to identify them as Skywatch. Once all the somber introductions and name exchanges had taken place, Buckmaster spoke up again. Doctor, you mentioned on the comnet you had news. Admiral Hughes isn't dead. Mallory almost spit her drink across the room. Fortunately, she recovered in time. Zoni slapped both hands on the table and gawked. Even Yili looked up from her handheld. Say again? Cobb asked tentatively, holding a half-eaten breadstick in one hand and a full butter knife in the other. Honora stirred her tea. I was about to perform the autopsy when I discovered the initial evaluation of his vital signs was mistaken. There was an equipment malfunction, at least as best as I can tell. When I set up the OR for the initial examination, I detected a pulse. The man is alive and has been alive in a stasis field in Argent Sick Bay for some time. Good thing we didn't park him in a morgue freezer. That means we have a witness, Yilly said, settling back into her comfortable chair with her glass of wine. What happens when the inquiry board finds out? Zoni whispered urgently. They won't, Buckmaster said. Agreed, Jace added. Zoni looked back and forth between the others at the table. We can't just lie to them. Uh, we're not lying, we're just not telling them Hughes is alive, Yilly said, picking up her handheld again. Well, they're going to find out, aren't they? Duncan broke another breadstick in half. Not if the doctor has her way, methinks. Zoni looked at Honora with an astonished expression. The Argent Chief Medical Officer continued nonchalantly stirring her tea. I'm still conducting my investigation. No longer a homicide, Jace offered. No, but definitely an attempted homicide. Jason was adamant in his belief Hughes was not killed by alien forces or Atwell's operatives. So far, I haven't uncovered any evidence the captain was wrong. I still don't have enough to prove his theory, however. So, it's still an open investigation, Buckmaster finished. It became one when Acting Commander Mallory signed off on Jason's order to investigate. So now it's Mallory's order, Zack asked. Sergeant Benning and the pilot both looked at the XO expectantly. An official investigation into a potential Article 24 incident requires the assent of at least two senior officers, including the CO, Jace replied. Sabrina makes number two. The doctor is three. What's the captain's theory? Mallory asked. When Argent was dispatched to Gitern, Jason had been placed under orders not to discuss the internecine conflict at Skywatch Command. Hughes was part of the faction insisting we prepare for the threat in the region. His own vigilance was used against him. Dunkirk was sent to Gitarin as a target, not a show of strength. They wanted Hughes out of the way, Sergeant Hall added. Literally? Benning asked with a shocked expression. And they wanted to pin the blame on Jason Hunter, Honora said. That would have ended the so-called alarmist debate once and for all, leaving the door open for Atwell to run wild. They didn't count on us recovering Dunkirk and the Admiral or destroying the Sentinel or discovering the missing crews. They sent wave after wave against us and lost every engagement. Then Atwell abducted Arjun's crew when we started sniffing around Lethe Deeps, Zoni said. When Rebecca and Minstrel arrived, the plan unraveled. She kept Argent from being captured by the Sarn and going down over Bayon 3, 
Sabrina continued. The commander failing to follow orders wasn't part of the anti-preparation faction's plan, and neither was Minstrel being sent back to Shadow Argent. Jace raised her glass and nodded as if in gratitude. So Atwell blows up the Dunkirk and tries to blow up Commander Hunter, Buckmaster said. And when it goes bad on the Bayon 3 surface, the whole planet winks out. That was his ultimate defense against anything we did, Jace said. He always had the option of shifting from one dimension to the next. The thing is, he didn't count on us capturing his technology or his ship. His ship? Honora asked. I have the Psy Key, damaged but intact. Where? Buckmaster asked. Safe and strategically left out of my log, which means missing in action as far as Skywatch is concerned, Jace replied. I have her set down at one of my old tinkering buddy's outposts on the far side of Alera. Stolen spacecraft parked on the moon? She's a hunter, all right, Honora quipped. She's a Palermo-class frigate, crew of 40, tough as hell, almost a match for minstrel, and she's jammed to the bulkheads with Atwell's secrets, which I will be very happy to learn when I get a chance to tear her apart. But first we've got to get her past the perimeter and back to Bayonne. I think I know what the commander's plan is, Yili sang as the server refilled her glass of wine. Can you help me upgrade her? Jace asked. Sure. Yili took another sip and went back to her device. Bring the parts and some good music and I'll bring my goggles and welders. Yili can fix anything, Zoni said. You should have seen the race car we built together. Now hold on a minute. Buckmaster said as the food finally arrived. The last time we ran off half-baked, oh, we're doing this one no-bake, Honora said. And I'll have that pirate's pelt hanging in my office if I have to melt down my leaves right alongside my mortar and pestle to do it. You don't seriously think Cerulea Lorleans shot Jason Hunter down, do you? Zoni asked. The Condor pirates have always been a thorn in our side, but Cerulea's never done anything treacherous against us. She helped Yili and Mu take Barker's asteroid. Minimal help, Yili replied. Well, she still helped. She could have just as easily stolen the Dunkirk. As I recall, she got a nice windfall out of that deal, Jace said as she prepared her salad. Those Trilumina mines should be the first place we look. Argent detected the Shrike at Bayon 3, Honora said coldly. We got a positive ID moments before the captain's fighter was destroyed, and Cerulea will answer for it. What about the Admiral? How are we going to keep that on the down low? Buckmaster asked. Now that we're all guilty of hiding evidence. We're not hiding a thing, Honora said. I have full authority over the Hughes investigation, and that authority was granted by Captain Hunter and confirmed by Commander Mallory. Skywatch Command might disagree, Mallory offered. They can disagree all they want, but if they interfere with my investigation of the circumstances surrounding the attempted murder of a flag officer, they'll be liable for obstruction. That's going to be a tough sell in a room full of admirals, Buckmaster said. The regulations are clear. The vessel Hughes was discovered on was captured under Jason's authority. Under Skywatch regulations regarding captured vessels in open space, as senior officer present he had jurisdiction over the entire crime scene the moment he boarded that ship, and that includes Hughes's body. But he was alive, Zoni added. Our best readings at the time indicated he was deceased. Instead, he turned out to be a rescued survivor from a wrecked ship. Doesn't change the legal situation. It was still Jason's call. Until he assigned you, Zoni said. Exactly, the doctor replied. The moment he ordered me to conduct an autopsy, it became a criminal investigation. And until I issue a report, as Argent's chief medical officer, now it's my call, Honora said. Jason may have handed us the key to this whole thing when he took Admiral Power's advice and reassigned Sabrina. I can cause the brass way more trouble under my medical authority than I can as XO. So now we're cops, Mallory said. Well, one of us is a cop, Yilly replied. I'm drunk. Everyone laughed. By the way, I have to ask, Duncan said. What would it take to promote Zoni here? Because if I'm going to be stepped out of the battleship, I want all my adopted daughters to be commanders. Jace, Mallory asked, gesturing. Me? I can't promote her. She's not even part of my crew. You're the ranking officer. You're a commander, Jay said with an inviting gesture. So is Honora. Be my guest. Zoni looked around with an astonished expression and shook her head. I just want to be a lieutenant. Yili shoved her shoulder a few times. There you have it, ma'am. You're in command, Cobb said with a nod towards Mallory. Promotion! Promotion! 
Buckmaster chanted, raising his beer and thumping the table. Very well, Mallory said, raising her own glass. Zoni Tixia, as former acting executive officer of the battleship Argent, I hereby officially promote you to the rank of acting lieutenant commander with all the rights and privileges there too. Everyone cheered. Zoni blushed and put her head down on her arms. Good, all my girls are commanders now. Cobb led another toast. I have the highest ranking adopted family in Skywatch, more brass than a halftime show. I think I'll have another beer to celebrate. Buckmaster went back to his stake. By the way, Zack, are you going to pilot for us? I hear the Psyche is quite a ride. If he can drive, he's hired, Jace said as her drink arrived. She immediately buttonholed the server and directed him to take dinner orders from the others. Zack raised his own glass and nodded. Been a while since I've manned a helm, but I think I can shake the rust out. What is your plan, Commander? Honora asked. Jace finished ordering. I dispatched coded orders to everyone in the group. First, we're going to engage in several acts of interstellar ledger domain, and then we're going to Hallow's Moon. What's on Hallow's Moon? Zoni asked. Jace finished her drink in one shot. Answers, 